In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to accompany an Irish reel called Miss McLeod's Reel. It's in the key of G. I'm going to show you the strumming patterns for it. We're going to bring up the chords on the side here. I have Mr. Shane Hayes on the button accordion to play for us. So we're going to listen to it now at session tempo, just once through, and then we'll slow things down and we'll break things down bit by bit. <laughs> It's Aidan here, AidanCoin.com, where I teach you how to play in dadgad guitar. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about Irish music, songs and guitar techniques, click the subscribe button now and the bell so you don't miss out on anything. I've been back on tour for the last few months with the Irish band Socks in the Frying Pan. We've been touring around Europe and North America. It's been good to get back on the road and playing festivals over there. So now I'm back in studio, we'll get started into this real Miss McLeod's and we'll start with the rhythm. So this being a reel, it's in 4-4 time and a very simple way of playing a reel would be just 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But we want to make this a bit more interesting for ourselves and the way I like to play this tune is with this little picking pattern. It goes down on the low D, up on the middle D, and then down on a treble side, up on the treble side. So when I say treble, just either the, the top three strings there. So it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you just have to get a bit more accurate with your right hand. So it's down on the low D and then up on that middle D. So that's where you have to kind of really nail that. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then when you increase the speed up to real tempo, just get your metronome out practice that and then you can change chords but just start slow and build that up so um, that's that's one where you just take your time with it you get your metronome out and you start down up down up so low bass again low D middle D and then treble twice down up so that fits into the 4-4 four, four strum and you can mix between that and and just strumming a normal strum which is down up down up down up down up one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and back into the strum back into the picking and kind of mix things up like that and just get comfortable with getting your right hand alternating between those two. So when it comes to the chords, I'll show you the chord shapes that I use and tonally you just want to follow the tune. So I'm not going to give you any hard and fast set chords. I'm just going to show you how I kind of dance around the tune really and hopefully you're able to find your own style then from this. So we're working off this D shape. It's a G chord because we have the cap on the fifth fret. And from here, I like to just work on the tonally on the mid, mid tones. So it might sound like this. So I'm not even hitting that low D string yet. I'm not bringing that in until maybe the second half where you want to, to cause a lift to the tune. So you just want to keep things nice and tame. That's how I'm, I'm accompanying it. And uh, so we'll go through these chord shapes. We have the, the D major shape. From here, we're going up to this. It's an E shape really, but uh, we we're just putting our first finger on that second fret of the D string. And then we have the open G string. So from we go from the D, to this, this E shape and we have this F sharp shape so we have first finger on the second fret of the G string third finger on the fourth fret of the middle D so going through those three chords you go D E and this F sharp shape from here we can slide up to the G so that's second finger on the fourth fret of the G and 
third finger on the fifth fret of that middle D. So really we can work around tonally uh, with those chords. So with that rhythm that we went, went through, we can go up to the E, the F sharp shape, and then G shape. And we just want to get comfortable with dancing around the, these, these chord shapes. So just get play around with that rhythm and those chord shapes. Maybe a hammer on. Up to the F. A slide. Slide back down. Hammer on. And when you get comfortable with those shapes, you're able to just, you know, use your ear to, to follow the tune a bit more. So. From here, you can build the tone tonally up, say for the for the second time round of part one. We can use those same chords, except on the lower D string. So we can go from this, we can start filling things out. We can let that low D string ring out now. And then moving up to this first finger on the second fret for the of the low D. Get that E tone again. Then this is the lower F shape, sharp shape. First finger on that G string again. Third finger on the fourth fret of the low D now, instead of that inside D. And then sliding up to the G. So that's second finger on the third or the fourth fret of that G string and third finger on the fifth fret of the low D now rather than that inside. So then we can start playing around with those lower tones. Up to the F sharp shape. G. And just get comfortable moving around those. Sliding up, sliding down, hammer on. So then you've tonally got the, the mid shapes and the low shapes to work around. So with that in mind, um, there's only one chord that I've added in at the very end of section one, which is sliding from this G shape up to this A shape. You go take that same shape and you take it up two frets and it's just a nice one leading into the second part where you fall back to that D shape. So that's um, the chords that I really work from. Let's have a listen to part one, slow now, and uh, you can follow the, the chord shapes that I'm doing. Um, just think about the mid shapes and the low shapes, and then that slide up to the high A shape at the very end of part one. <laughs> If you're enjoying things so far, please do click the like button and the subscribe button. It helps a lot on the channel. And if these chord shapes are new for you or if you'd want more, I have a free cheat sheet, which I'll leave up here. And it goes through all uh, the major shapes that I'd be using in Dadged. And it's a good starting point. It gives you the low tones, the mid tones, the high tones. And uh, it's just a, a nice starter off to, to get you going in Dadged. It has all the notes on the fretboard as well. So I tried to squeeze as much as I can onto a poster size. So check that out. And let's move on to part two now. The chords I use for the first time around in part two sound like this. So let's go through those lines. Basically, I'm working from this D shape again that we had in part one except I'm opening it up to a D modal. So I'm lifting off my third finger. And then I introduce that third 
to get make it major. So I go from here, I drop down to the E note we've had, or E, e chord shape. So it goes. And do a hammer on there. So then up to the F sharp shape and to the G, just as we had in part one. It goes. And then I slide up to the A, this inside A. So it goes. One more time, it goes D. Drop down the third finger. You have your first finger on the second fret. And we have the inside F sharp shape, G, and then slide up to the A. After that, I have this descending bass line, which goes. So here are the notes for that. You have the fourth finger on the fifth fret of that low A string, third finger on the fourth fret of the low A, and then first finger on the second fret. So I do a hammer on there. So with the first finger. From here, we have the outside F sharp shape. So it goes from that descending line. I do a hammer on there as well, so. From here, we move it up to the G. So add that together. And then, just to finish off that first part, we go. I, I drop my first finger down to get this low E shape, and then we have a third finger on the fourth fret, and then finish off with the open D. So that line together. So that's a quick change there. So first finger to third finger to open. So that bass line again. Do it one more time, I messed up there. G shape. So then all together from that D modal to the D major to the E, to the F sharp inside, G, slide up to the A, and then we have the bass line. One more time. Once that section is done, we can kind of repeat it on the lower strings. So instead of doing the major, making it really major, adding that what would be an F sharp note in, the, we can actually make that on the outside now, instead of having it on the inside B. So it's actually a B note, but we won't worry about that. It's the shapes we're worrying about. From here, instead of going to this inside G shape, we can actually go to the outside G shape. So we'll go. Up to the G. So then. And slide up to the A then, just like we did on the inside. So. And we can do the bass line again. going to be the same as we had before and then G could repeat that that line again so all in all I would play it like this bass down again except on the outside 
bass line again. So what you're really trying to do is just work around, it's the same type of shape, same type of chords, except tonally, you're moving from these inside to the outside. And it just kind of gives you um, a bit of a tonal range, being able to change things while following the tune in the same, same way. So hopefully that's, that's uh, I've explained that okay. And we will listen to part two now. Uh, at a slower tempo and you can see where I'm following the tune a bit with those lines. <laughs> Before we join those two sections together, let's just think about the chord shapes that we, we've gone through. Part one, we were thinking about the mid tones. We were going D, E, F sharp minor, G, and A. And then we just open things up. So it's only five chords there. One, two, three, four, five. And then tonally, we just started introducing the lower, lower side of things. So one, two, three, four, five. So we had the D. Had the low E, the low F sharp minor shape, G, and the low A. So when you're thinking about the tune or going through it slow, you want to just be playing around with these shapes inside and outside. And it just allows you a bit of freedom instead of being stuck to the exact same chords every single time. And um, it allows you that bit of freedom. So I hope that was clear, a bit clearer. Outside of that, we did have that descending bass line but that was just to maybe follow the, the tune a bit as well so there's plenty more you can be adding in uh, and I have loads more on this channel so do check out I'll, I'll leave that up here as well and down in the description if these chord shapes are new to you you can check that out I have plenty of videos that go through that but let's add those two parts together now part one and part two at a slow tempo <laughs> So now if you've got those chord shapes at the slower tempo, the next thing to do would be to raise that tempo maybe to session speed. So I'll put part one and two together here at session speed, but if it is too fast for you, there's a button down here in the corner which you can slow, or slow the tempo down and maybe challenge yourself then to slowly raise it up and get comfortable with moving these chord shapes at session tempo, that'd be I the ideal thing to do. But if you ever get stuck, just remember that a drone works perfectly well in Irish music as well. So um, having that drone and then practicing or testing out some of the chord shapes as they go along. And uh, yeah, challenging your right hand to get keep up with the tempo, challenging your left hand to change chords on time and whatnot. So that's how I go about it. And we'll give it now a go at session tempo. <laughs> Finally, I wanted to give you a bonus at the end, which is just Shane Hayes playing the button accordion on his own, and he's going to play the tune at a reasonable tempo, and you can practice along with it without me getting in the way. So let's give that a go. <laughs> Bye. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please let me know in the comments. If you have any questions at all, I'm happy to get back to you, help you out. So just let me know. And here is the next video I would suggest checking out. It's called Frank's Reel. It's in G as well. So you might enjoy that. And I'll talk to you on the next one. All the best.